All right, hello YouTube. We're gonna talk today about the versatility in this belt pattern, and not just this belt pattern, but really you can do this with, with any pattern, but I'm gonna show you how we can shift and make this look entirely different um, with just changing our petals on these flowers. So this pattern that we're using, this is right straight from uh, my new pattern book, the Leather Tooling Pattern Book, Volume 2. And this is one of our belt patterns in there. Now, this is how this pattern is gonna traditionally tool up. That's what it's gonna show in the book, um, is this with these nice rounded petals, which is a really cool look, uh, something a little bit different. But um, what I've done is I've taken that pattern there made a tap off for it, um, which there's another video on the channel here about making tap offs, so you can check that out if that's something that interests you. But I've tapped this pattern off right here. And that gives us that original pattern that's in the book there. Now, what am I gonna do to, to shift this? So I'm gonna go right around to our pedals here. Now I'm just using a uh, kind of a ballpoint stylus here. It's not sharp, but it's gonna help me kind of sketch on my leather and make some adjustments. And we're just gonna kind of shift right where those pedals are. And we're gonna bring, bring them all to a point. And when we carve these in, you'll start seeing a little bit of the difference. And once it tools out, it'll really, really kind of show that because uh, we can get in there with, with a lifter right underneath these little curls here. So even though this has been transferred and shows that original line, once we actually cut that in, which I have my swivel knife here. I'm going to show you when I do that. But those original lines, they'll go away once we kind of bevel over, once we cut them in and then bevel those lines. So we don't have to worry about that. And this is a pretty easy adjustment to get a different look on that uh, flower here. Now you can you can do even uh, even more drastic. We could put more ridges in those petals, or um, make one of them flip up. Lots of different things, but for for this one here. All we're doing is gonna make some minor adjustments here. Taking these from a rounded pedal to one with a point. And by having that little hook in there, it's gonna give me a place to come in with my lifter, kind of show a little bit more dimension and add to that look. Now this particular belt has some initials on here I'm just gonna kind of darken up the end of that so we can see that. All right, now when I go to cut this in, check this out. I'm always gonna start when I cut a pattern that has a border like this, which I've already gone through with my dividers here and marked that border so I have a nice crisp uh, border that's in line with the edge of that leather there. Okay, now we're gonna pull that border line. Sure, we keep that nice and straight. Okay, now we can go back, start 
pulling in these cuts here. I'm just gonna go right to those pedals that we had adjusted. Now it's a small adjustment, but super easy to do. I'm gonna change the look of those flowers there. I see some questions coming in as we're live here. Uh, I'll try to get to those as we can. One, uh, one question I just seen pop in was, how deep do I go with my cuts? As a general rule, this is very general, but for me, when I start a cut, kind of the, that bevel on the end of my blade, when I start it, the depth of that cut is almost to the top of that bevel, and that's the best kind of guide I can use to try to teach somebody um, on how to how deep to cut that without sitting there with you and saying, oh, cut that a nope, little bit deeper on your next cut, you know? So that's a good, good guide if you're just checking yourself as you're getting started there. Another tip too, especially where we're coming with a point on these pedals, you can notice here, I'm not actually connecting that point with my knife. Here's some of these other points that are exposed. I'm staying a little bit, a uh, little bit of distance away from there. And that reason being, I don't want to create a weak spot in that leather that's going to lift up over time. So we're just going to connect that with our bevel when we come back to tool that. to flip this pattern around so I can be always pulling my cuts back towards me here. I always want to be able to see where I'm going with that knife. Drawing those cuts, especially these ones in the vine work, I'm starting deep and I'm fading those cuts off as I bring those back to me. And this knife that I'm using here, this is a Leather Wrangler's knife. It, as uh, my personal preference is a 3 8 barrel with a quarter inch straight blade and that's that's all personal preference stuff um, really with any of this leather work it's all personal preference on tools and even how you're doing this stuff different techniques there is not one right way to do leather work uh, especially tooling there's so many different ways to do this stuff um, and I hope what I tell you in any of these videos, um, I hope my patterns, all that stuff, I hope it helps you. Um, but I hope it helps you just kind of gives you inspiration and confidence to go on and, and try new things and, and be creative. Um, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to tell you this is the, the only way to do any of this. Um, it's just what's worked for me and kind of how I've learned over the years to do things but again it is definitely not the only way and I hope more than anything that it just gives you confidence to to go out and try try doing doing some new things with with your tooling as well but if you are interested in the book where this pattern um, is available uh, that's that's all on my website there, the uh, 23plus.com, uh, which I link that in the description there. And so you guys can, can check that out. You can get this book in uh, this book as well as volume one. You can get either in the digital copy where you download and print off yourself or uh, in the hard copy uh, that gets sent out to you. But... 
Let me just address a couple of questions. I'm not gonna go through and tool this all the way out in this video, but I just wanna show you how to adjust that pattern. Um, really give a different look to those flowers. Um, again, that's gonna really show up, especially when we shade those out and can get in there with a little lifter and kind of pick up in those, in those curls there. But um, that's the main thing of what I wanted to show you in this video. But I, I do see some comments here. I'm going to get to those the best I can. Um, I haven't gone live on here a bunch lately. Um, so I'm kind of learning here as I go. Okay, here we go. Now I found them. Um, as far as casing my leather, I do wet that down. I don't case overnight or anything like that. I, I get it wet down really good to start with when I'm transferring my pattern. Let that leather soak in there. Um, get that moisture content in there, but then I'll usually wet down one more time again right before I cut, and that lasts me quite a while. It's, I don't go through a big casing process um, simply because I'm gonna tool through this pretty fast so I don't have to re-wet it a bunch. Uh, I also rely on a lot of my dyes and finishes, antiques and things like that for my color in there, but it is wet down. There is moisture in that when I'm cutting that and when I tool it for that matter. Um, okay, what other, I think I got how deep with the cuts and the blade we're using. Um, what your main tip for a beginner is. Connor, the main tip for a beginner is be patient with yourself. Um, I, I would I would encourage you to just be patient, take time. It, it takes a lot of time uh, learning any craft, but especially uh, leather craft. It's, it, it can be frustrating, but don't be afraid to try new things and mess up. Um, one other big question I get is, um, or a thing we run into is people wanting to just draw their own patterns and tool their own patterns. Um, or, you know, don't think it's good to, to tool other people's patterns. I go both ways on that. One, obviously, I think it's good to tool other patterns. I, I offer this book. Um, I also think it's good to learn how to, to draw your own patterns. I, I offer a drawing course as well to teach you how to do this yourself. Uh, so you don't have to buy my pattern books. But I, I encourage you to do those separately. Learn to tool and learn to draw. But as you're learning to tool, it helps to tool on patterns that, will, that are designed with that flow in mind. They're designed to, to tool up, uh, flip some pages here, you know, where, where anything that, that's working in the circles and stuff, they already have that, that good flow. Lines go where they're supposed to go. A book like this kind of shows you where to, which direction to bevel in as you're going through those patterns as, as well. But, um, learn to tool on patterns that are already drawn uh, for, <laughs> um, for the ease of tooling, and then learn to draw at, you know, at the same time or, or, uh, or later on, but, um, but let yourself learn both of them separately instead of just trying to put those together right from the get-go. So I think that's, that's one that kind of really helps a lot. Um, and where do you get the, the belt pattern pack? The, uh, not only this pattern book, but all my pattern packs and, and all that's available on the website there, 23plus.com, all spelled out. And that link is in the, the description as well. Um, oh gosh, thank you for following there. Um, oops, oops, hang on. I'm Hit my chat here, trying to not lose it. Uh, but after using the oil on it, does the acrylic paint stick and stay? It does not peel off. Uh, RD, the you're correct. If you check back, um, check on my channel. I have a my whole finishing process, and that's going to show you step by step what I do on there. But yeah, uh, oil first. Then once that's let that oil sit and dry in there. Then I can go back with those acrylic paints and yeah, I've had, they stick great. Um, I have a finished process where I use lacquers over top of that paint too. So be sure to check that video out and that'll help, uh, help get you all the, 
um, all my process and the products that I use on that. But great question on there. So I think I've uh, I think I've got all the questions that we have here live. Um, so if you're watching this on the replay, have more questions. Be sure to type those in there. Also, let me know if you have uh, other questions or ideas for videos that you would like to see on here. I love to keep this content as um, as rele relevant as I can. Um, the other thing on this belt, you'll notice there's nothing in the center. This is actually, I'm part way through doing this belt for a beaded inlay belt and that I'm, I'm working on that video. Um, and that's gonna be here on my YouTube channel as well. So keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in that, I show that process start to finish. Um, and if you wanna see the rest of this tooled up, be sure to check out our uh, Facebook page, uh, just at 23PLUS, so 23 plus. And that, um, I think we're gonna go ahead and, and tool that on there. So appreciate you guys checking this out and we will catch you